Now this will be a bit of a long tutorial, but we'll focus on B lookups, H lookups, and there'll be some more complex formula in there. This spreadsheet is part of last year's old higher admin exam, so not admin and IT, but the straight um, admin course. And most of what they did is quite similar to what you do. So we'll take you through some of these tasks and then we'll give you an idea of what to expect. So we've got four tabs down here. We've got venue costs, we've got performances, we've got event costs, and we've got availability. Four tabs we have to work on now. There's only two we can actually complete here. We've got the availability tab and we've got the performances tab. And event costs. Now let's first of all try and work out our event, an events costs tab. So we want to find the venue cost per hour or so. We've got to work out how much it costs to hire this venue for one hour. We have the name of the venue, we have a venue cost tab here. So we can see the information is displayed vertically. Let's go to FX. We shouldn't realize that that's a V lookup. Click OK. The lookup value we want is the strand table array where we want to look for it. Let's not forget to absolute cell reference it. Column index is two because it's a two column table and the cost is in the second area. And let's click on for type in false. And copy it down the column. Now we've absolute cell reference so we can drag it down as far as we need to be. And there we go. Now I had already formatted the cell for currency, so that's why they displayed uh, the value. The venue cost per performance. So really simple equation at higher, something you should be easily able to work out. Performance duration multiplied by cost per hour. Really simple. Next, the total cost of performance would of course be the cost to hire the venue. Add on what you're paying your performance. And let's copy that one down. So we've so far done the VLA Cup, we've done an add and we've done multiply. Now we've got number of performances. We want to work out how many times each show is being performed. So let's look at our performance tab. Now, the way we do this is a count F. We want to count the number of performances. So, FX, we want to count F. The criteria we're looking for, we're looking for the name of the performance. So, we're looking for Joe King or Royal Rumbles. We don't absolutely see a reference, so we can copy it down. If we go to our range, performances. Then we highlight what we're looking for from our range. So the range of all the performances is F4, our cell references. So let's click OK and copy on down. So we've done a count of performances to look for every instance of this show. And it has retrieved the data. Now, another pretty simple area to get marks would be the total cost of the event. And um, it would simply be the total cost per performance multiplied by the number of performances. So, G4 times H4. So, so far, we have got. So far we have V lookup, so we've done multiplication, we have done count if, and we've done an addition. So things that are all relatively, well, can be quite straightforward, I guess the, the V lookups can be difficult, as can the count ifs, can be difficult to work out the criteria, but 
that goes quite straight forward spreadsheet. This is the question we're looking at. We've done part A. So I'm going to focus on part B. I would like information on how to increase our selling for each event. And I plan to start promoting events which are not selling. In the ticket availability sheet, calculate the number of tickets sold using information from the performance sheet. And what we're trying to work out here next is we're going to try and work out how many tickets have been sold to date for each event. So in total, for each performance, each time it's on, how many tickets have been sold for each, each performance essentially. So tickets sold to date. So we want to work out how many tickets have been sold to date for hashtag Isla Bar, hiking to a different difference, and so on and so on. So we're, we're adding up. So this is going to be a sum of so FX. Sum. Now we're trying to remember what previous was about working working backwards, so we want to look for the criteria. Our criteria is the name of the place. It's I love art. Hashtag I love art and no need to actually absolute sell reference to that. Read that, unlock and you can copy it down. Let's highlight all of the, the events over the week. And let's absolutely sell reference them. And then the sum range, if you go back to performances, you look at all the instances that show how much how many tickets have been sold for each event. Then again, if you absolutely sell reference, those two. Okay, and we copy it on down. You can see we've worked out how many tickets have been sold to date for each each show. So we've got potentially six hundred and we sold two hundred and eighty, uh, two thousand and a thousand. So we've added up all the ticket sales for each date and each performance. Now our next step is as a percentage to show value of tickets that are left to sold for each, each, each show really. So let's first of all highlight our area for percentages. No decimal places. Now what we have here is 600 tickets available and we're sold 280. So the formula to work out a percentage of, of what we have left is equals and we need a bracket and it would be our total number of tickets available. Take away the number of tickets that have been sold. Close brackets. Divided by the number of tickets that are available for the event. And this shows us the number of tickets that we still have available overall as a percentage. So we've got um, 15% left, or 300, we've got 44%. So that's what's out the percentage of tickets that we have available. So what we're going to try and do here is to, using an if statement, or an if upon an if, an if to this, display a value based upon a percentage. So it's an if statement, but we've got three values, three possible variables instead of two. So as always, for fx, for FX box open now, the cell we want to examine our logical test is D4. So if D4 is in this case equal to 0%, so that equals no percentages, then the outcome will be sold out. And that's absolute cell reference to H and F4. Up in the false box, then up to your left hand corner, then add another F. Then if D4 is greater than, less than or equal to 20%, which we will put a percent sign in, and then if that's true, then our value is limited. So let's put an F4, an H and F5 to make it absolute, and then if it's greater than 20%, the, the availability is regarded as good. So what we have here is if D4 is less than or equal to zero, you get H4. Then we'll say the 
D4 is left and is equal to 20%, they get limited or they get good. Let's click it and let's copy our variable down. Like so, and you can see that it has worked. So, quite, quite tricky. Again, it's all about adding the extra, the extra F line from up here. And selecting it and it adds another set of brackets to it. This is quite a straightforward one. You can do it when you've got equations to do, but this is a very simple one.